Webflow just unlocks some brand new variable types and custom styles. Here's the top ways to use these updates. So here I have this hex code saved, but I have another variable using that same hex code, but at a 10% opacity for my borders, and another one using the same color, but at a 20% opacity for my forms. So if I wanted to change this color previously, I would have to update that across each of the opacity versions as well. Or if we were to animate this color, we'd have to animate all of the variables. But now we can use a custom value. If I hit the equal sign in here, it'll pull up the custom value editor, or I could just paste the value directly into here. I'll leave a link to all the code in the description below. So now if I open this up, I can replace this variable with my variable name. In this case, it's dark 900. And once I connect this, if I were to rename this variable to something else, you'll notice it's also going to update inside of the custom value as well. So I'm using this variable at a 10% opacity. And another way to get to this is when we go to connect the variable, all the way at the bottom, we can use the color mix custom function here. And there's a couple different ways we can mix it, and we can mix two colors together at different opacities. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to use this color in sRGB at a 20% opacity, and that is going to mix with transparent. So if I save that, um, it'll actually just use that color at the 20% opacity. I can click out to save, or if I hit enter, it'll create a new line. If I hit command enter, it'll save. So that's another way to do it. And now if we were to change this color, it'll also change the opacity opacity versions as well. We can also use this to create tints and shades of a color. So I'll hit the equal sign to open up that custom value editor. I'll paste this in and I'm going to use the brand uh, color here, the main one, and we'll use white at a 60% opacity. If we did 100%, it would be fully white. If we did 10%, it would only be a little bit lighter. And we don't just have to use uh, white here. We could use any variable we have access to. So I'll go ahead and run that. And now we have a lighter version here. And for our darker version, I'll say we'll mix this with black at a 40% opacity. And so if we run that, it, we have a darker version here. And when we change this color, it's also going to update all the other versions as well. Now we can also use this update to store fluid font sizes and fluid spacing, which can improve the accessibility and responsiveness of our site. Now here we're saying this font size should be 7 rim when the screen width is 90 rim or wider. And whenever it shrinks down to 20 rim screen width, then the heading should shrink down to a 3 rim font size. So we can copy this value. And for our size variables here in Webflow, one of the types they support now is clamp. So we can paste that directly into here, and now our heading becomes fluid. But if we ever decide to update our minimum or maximum screen size, we would have to regenerate all of the fluid values we're using. So instead, we can create number variables that store our max and min screen size. And I'll just copy over this formula. And I'll create a new number variable. And I'll call this screen dash size forward slash min. I'll set the min value to be 20 to represent 20 rim. I'll create another number variable in that folder called max. And this is going to be set to 90. And from here, I'll head over to this H1 font size and paste in the formula from Notion. So now it's connected to our max and min screen size. And from here, if we want it to create an H2 sort of font size, I can just go ahead and add in another size variable. And here we might want the max and min font size to be different. So it was 5 rim on desktop and 3 rim on mobile before. So if I just click behind this number and I hold my command key and click again, I can edit all of these together. Or a faster way to do it is to click behind the number and press command D on your keyboard a couple of times until it selects all of the numbers like so. I can set my max font size to 4 and then I'll hit command D again until it selects all of them and I'll set that min font size to 2. And so now, if I were to update this maximum screen size or min screen size, it'll change where all of these other font sizes are starting and stopping. Now, at the time of recording this video, Webflow doesn't allow Webflow apps to set these uh, fl fluid values in the variable panel. But if they do change that, I'd love to create a new app that handles all of this automatically for you. In the meantime, the cleanest way to do it would be probably something like this if we still want to link max and min screen size. We could, of course, create uh, individual number variables, and we could call this h1 max, and I could have another one uh, for h1 min. 
And I could use that to set the max font size to something like five min font size to three. And then I would just use that variable everywhere I had five in place here. Um, but that requires us to create three variables for each font size, which I think is just a bit too much. I'd rather have it just all in one variable like so. Um, and here we can also decide to link our container width to that same number. So if we have a size variable, we call this container max width. Um, this is just a number variable right here. Um, it's not a rim unit, but if we want it to connect that, we can add in a calc and we can just say it's going to be our screen size max. Um, and then we'll say times one rim. So um, that screen size max is 70 times one rim will be 70 rim. And that means if we change our max uh, container size, it'll also change where each of the fonts stop scaling up. So everything's just connected together. A common layout pattern is to have left and right padding on our section so our container doesn't touch the edge of the screen. And inside we have the container that has a max width and is centered within that remaining space. Now this can require us to use extra divs than what we want to use, especially in places like a menu or a light box. And it would be better to just have the container handle all of this. So what we can do is remove that left and right padding from the section. And then for the container, I can just add a custom value by hitting my equal sign in this field. It pops this up and I'll just paste this in. So the container is gonna have a width of 100 minus three rim times two. So that way we get three rim on each side. So it's essentially 100% minus six rim. And then it's going to reach a max width of 90 rim. So this works the same way as if we had left and right padding on this section, is that this is gonna keep scaling up while leaving three rim on each side until it reaches that max uh, width of 90 rim. Now, the great thing about this is we can actually bind it to variables like container max width here, and now it's actually linked to that variable. So if we rename the variable in the panel, it'll also change everywhere we're using it. That wasn't the case before. And for this three rim, we can replace that with our site margin sort of variable, which is that left and right space we want everywhere throughout our site. And I can just run this and it's gonna work exactly the same where it has that max width, but it also makes sure that the container doesn't touch the edge of the screen. Now, sometimes we might have multiple different max width values we're using throughout our site and multiple different margin values we're using, like a main and a small version. So we can combine those two by just using a custom class. Here I've called this hero container, and that way I can override the max width without affecting other containers throughout the site. So I'll switch it to max width small, and it's small like so, or I could override just the margin. I could use a smaller margin value, and again, it's gonna change this. Or we could use the small max width and the small margin value together so we can combine them all however we'd like. So that's just a few of the ways we can use these new values in Webflow. I hope this tutorial helps you and I'll catch you in the next one.